Louisiana Beer Reviews, Zeppelin Beer. This is a Keller beer or a cellar beer. It's unfiltered lager, 5.2% alcohol. It's brewed in Germany by Max Leibinger, the brewery Max Leibinger. Okay, uh, it's made according to the Reinheitsgebot. book. It only has the uh, pure German ingredients. Um, 11.2 ounce ripoff bottle. I bought this at Mathern Supermarket in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, it has a 20 international bitterness unit or BE European bitterness uh, level. So it's not going to be too bitter. Gets a good score on Beer Advocate, but with only 44 ratings. A 30 out of 100 rate beer, 27 out of 100 for the style with only 53 ratings. So we're only looking at, we're only looking at 97 ratings in the major sites. Let's check it out. It says on here, So schmeckt Geschichte. So schmeckt Geschichte. That must mean so doggone good. Now, it says this is how history tastes. I hope this goes over well and not like a Led Zeppelin. And I hope this beer is more successful than Zeppelin's were. Okay. A little bit of smoke. Those Zeppelins are heavier than air ships invented by Mr. Zeppelin of Germany. Used in World War II, uh, World War I <laughs> to bomb Great Britain and failing miserably. Um, really to have any significant impact. After the war they decided to use them for air transportation across the ocean and that was another pretty bad failure. Alright, thick off-white head and the appearance is light colored. It's like a light amber. About as light amber as you can get before you're not amber. And a, some streaming bubbles. Okay. Interesting looking beer. Let's check it out. <clears throat> this was not expensive. I think it was like a dollar fifty for the bottle. Around that range. Net was not two dollars. <clears throat> I'm having to get way down in it because I can't pick up much. Some slight breadiness, slight toastiness, and sweetness. But that's about it. It's really not. It probably needs to warm up. So let's check out the flavor. Breading, toasty, sweet. Think of sweet, toasty breadiness. Um, think of a light body beer. 5.2% alcohol is slightly elevated alcohol by volume. Budweiser is 5%. Bud Ice is 5.5, .5, so we're in between those two. Now it says unfiltered, but <laughs> it doesn't look cloudy to me. The mouthfeel is light and watery. In fact, it seems like it has less body than Budweiser. And the finish is pretty dry. Not super dry, but pretty dry. It is refreshing here at almost noon. I know, it's almost afternoon. It's still morning, though. And um, the drinkability is very good, and it's, uh, it's decent. Decent lacing around there. Um, Kind of reminds me of Ziegenbach from Anheuser-Busch, which is lower alcohol, or uh, Michelob Amberbach, which is another, oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff caked to the bottom. There is the sediment. Amberbach from Michelob is uh, similar in color. I think it might be a little darker. And Michelob 
and Ziegenbach these days are made with uh, adjuncts. They used to not be when when Michelob was trying their craft beer approach, which bombed. So they just said, "Screw it, we'll go back to um, a cheaper version." Although the Michelob Lager, the original Michelob, is still made without the the rice or corn adjunct. Although interestingly, when Michelob first came out in 1896, it was made with the uh, adjuncts. It just tried to make it a craft thing, and people didn't go for it. Of course. People might have gone for it if Anheuser-Busch would actually have, you know, promoted the beer, that Michelob uh, idea, and advertised more than never. You know, they never advertised, never ran one. When's the last time you've seen a commercial for Michelob? I'm not talking about Michelob Ultra, but Michelob uh, 1994, maybe? Probably not that recent. So when beer gets zero attention, it dies on the vine. Ash Schlitz. Okay, um, it is clouding up. It is clouding up with that uh, Swisheroo. Oh, yeah, I got it. I did uncake it. So let's go in with it now and let's see what happens. Yeah, it really adds to it. It kind of like gives it more bite, more of a beer flavor. You know, that kind of sour beer flavor. It's hard to describe that. You know, that beer flavor, like I'm thinking of... Uh, um, I almost said natural ice. Actually, that's what I'm kind of picking up, that natural ice uh, thing going. Um, yeah, it's really a mild, pleasantly uh, drinkable, nicely flavored sweet beer from Germany. Um is it really way better than what you could get in America? Not really. Um, I mean, if you could if you could get this for let's say uh, six ninety nine at the most a six pack, yeah, go for it. But why pay six ninety nine for this one? You can go to a supermarket and get, and sometimes on sale you can get Michelob Amberbach for ten ninety nine a twelve pack. Usually it's eleven ninety nine a twelve pack. So that's such a good value, you know. And you're getting very similar type of. Taste and aroma, although this is a Keller beer and that's not, but really when you get down to it, they're not that different. All right. Like George, like uh, like Larry Holmes said, if you want to get techno, if you want to get techno, they're not that different. Okay, but anyway, I like it. One more sip. I really like it. As a matter of fact, I like it so much I'm going to give it an A-. And you could argue a, it's got such a nice aftertaste and undertaste and bite to it. I mean, it's not a, a harsh bite. It's not like Budweiser ice pick through the head bite. But it's got a bite, and I like it, and I would highly recommend it. So A-, minus. this is an excellent beer. And I'm going to end this review. Well, let me say this. So schmeckt Geschichte, you know, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.